Ani Bezo. Recently, I was inspired by the word Sankufa. Sankufa is the word of the Chui language of Ghana that translates to go back and get it. San means to return, Ku means to go, and Fa means to fetch, to seek or to take. The word is represented by a bird with his head turned backwards while his feet face forwards, carrying a precious egg in his mouth. The basic principle is that in order to move forward, Nelson Mandela once said, it always seems impossible until it's done. As I look back on my time here at Dirty College, I can truly say that this entire journey was a great experience from the beginning to the end. I'll be the first to tell you that Dirty College is not where I saw myself going when I was in 8th grade, and Ms. Hazel Dobbs for that. The idea of a high school experience blinded me from seeing the opportunity that was literally right here in front of me. At the time, you couldn't pay me to go to a five-year school instead of a four-year school but I stand in front of you today to say that I'm glad I did and I wouldn't trace experience for anything in the world. EECHS is more than just a school, it's a family. Though we look nothing alike, I consider every student in this graduating class a member of my family. Though I'm sure there have been moments we might not saw eye to eye, or we may not agree on some things, nothing can compare to the last we shared and the memories we made together. Everything we went through, the DC trip, Fort Fisher, junior internship, senior project, the time we were in the house, sophomore year, Ms. Clark would always pick on Jacob, <laughs> English with Ms. Hathaway, Science with Ms. Barbie, Driver's Ed, the grill back when he used to have the bacon cheese fries. All these memories that we, that some of, that all the memories that we may understand, that some of the younger kids may not understand, but we know they played a vital role in getting us here today. Call me crazy, but it seems like Bridgeley was just yesterday. Where did the time go? I truly mean this from the heart when I say these past five years have been some of the best, and to every one of, of my classmates, I wish you nothing but success. After today, when we all part ways and begin a new journey, no matter where the world takes us, I want each and every one of you to know that no matter what, you all have a special place in my heart. And thank you for making these last five years the most memorable. So in conclusion, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith, for creating a learning environment that feels like home. Thank you, Ms. Doss, for helping us make it through college. Thank you, Ms. Hayes, for literally everything you do for us super seniors. Thank you to every staff member who taught us, because without you, none of us would be here with right now. Thank you to my classmates for all the memories. Thank you to Edgecombe Community College for allowing us to house all these kids on this campus and providing us with all the tools we need to succeed. Thank you to all the parents for believing in us. I can stand up here and say thank you all night, but it's still an expressive gratitude that we feel. Last but not least, thank you Edgecombe River College High School for being the best school in the entire world. Thank you for the friendships and I made and the opportunities we had and the education we received. Mama, we made it. Thank you. <laughs>
and we quickly realized that High School Musical was not an accurate representation of what we were about to experience. Here's a few small recaps from that year. English 1 with Miss Hathaway was probably the most interesting class any of us have ever taken. There was the Greek mythology dress-up day, which was basically a toy and that time I brought a few chickens to school when we were reading the book Animal Farm. During lunch, everyone ordered cheese fries from the grill, we got to meet Izzy during Turtle Derby, and Kathy Webb was the scariest person on the planet when she was teaching us ACA. <laughs> but at the end of the year, we were different than when we started. We became a family during the Washington, D.C. trip, survived our first college class, and found out exactly how long it takes to, to walk between the B and the H buildings between classes. We finally felt like high school students. Sophomore year, we thought we owned the place and everyone probably hated us for it, but it was the year that we got Mr. Smith, we fell in love with Ms. Clark, and experienced our very first global project. Fort Fisher was a great trip because we found out how to properly order shrimp at a seafood restaurant. <laughs> and yet again, we changed without realizing it. Several students left during our sophomore year, so we started to become closer as a class. Through Greek projects, we were developing communication and presentation skills, and some of us even started getting leadership positions in some clubs throughout the school. We thought we were getting the hang of things until junior year hit, being juniors meant junior internship and actually facing the fact that we would have careers one day. We might have complained more than we should have, but the project definitely changed us. We had internships that we wanted, teaching, photography, website design, and some other great ones. We were able to get a taste of having a career and figure out what we wanted to do or not do with our lives. Having a project that large showed us how procrastination is your worst enemy, yet we still chose to ignore that for the next two years. Not so surprisingly, we survived, even if that glass door didn't. <laughs> senior year was senior project. It was like lions and tigers and bears from the Wizard of Oz, except it was paper and product and procrastination, oh my. We procrastinated, complained, and joked about dropping out of high school more than we should have, yet here we are alive again. I want to give a big shout out to Mr. Webb for being patient and a great mentor for us during that semester. We definitely learned a lot that will stick with us through college and beyond. And now we're here, super senior year. Some of us have had a fun time taking welding and weightlifting, while others had a fantastic time rushing to complete the required hours for their degree. And even though we didn't see everyone every day like we used to, I still feel like we grew closer. We realized that it's actually our last year. We're graduating together and starting the next section of our lives. We owe it all to the teachers and staff members we've had throughout the years. They're the people that realized our potential five years ago and pushed us to become the best we could be. And while we grew into our individual selves, we also grew to love the people who served us as mentors and leaders. Ms. Manley and Ms. Clark were the most iconic duo to ever exist. Ms. Dawes and Ms. Webb supplied the tough love in the school, and Ms. White showed us her passion for lifelong learning and a hard work ethic that everyone aspires to have. But there's a few people that I would like to thank specifically. Mr. Smith, your presence as principal at Edgecombe Early College High School has created the atmosphere and family environment every single school in the nation dreams to have. We have become motivated, focused, and very bright scholars because of everything you have done for the Turtle family. Your leadership is how Edgecombe Early College High School was nationally recognized as one of the best high schools in the nation. Thank you for putting your trust in me to create videos for the school and working with me through those processes. I'll always remember this place as the roots of my passion for film and the subject of my very first video. Thank you for being supportive of everyone in the graduating class of 2018 and creating an environment for students to feel safe in. Ms. Hayes, we all adore you beyond belief. You're incredibly strong, loving, wise, and a place of comfort for every single student at the school. I want to thank you for choosing the early college two years ago. Your presence makes it feel like home. Thank you for the hours and hours and hours of conversations in your office and being a leader when we feel lost. You've been joking about not letting me graduate for the past year, and now I wish you could so I can keep seeing you every day. A word of advice for the non-graduating Turtle family members, get to know your college professors. My experience as an early college student definitely would not have been the same without the relationships I have with a few of them. Mr. Kilwarren, Jacob and I want to thank you for not throwing markers at us for the past four semesters. 
and remaining patient when we have no idea how to start a really easy calculus problem. <laughs> Thank you for being the best calculus professor ever, showing us videos of your dog after class, and giving us a chance to do test corrections because boy did we need it. Ms. Amelia, Jacob and I also want to thank you for being patient with us through, throughout physics and engineering. You've always been supportive of our career choices, the best person for Netflix recommendations, and my personal good luck charm. Mr. Cherry, even though you haven't technically been my professor, you've still taught me a lot through the Balloon Project at Seals USA. Thank you both, along with Mr. Boyd and Dr. B, for giving me the chance to fly balloons to space, capture some of the coolest pictures and videos imaginable, and introducing me to the funniest group of people on the planet. It was my favorite part of Super Senior Year by far. Lastly, I want to thank the friends and family that came out to graduation to support us tonight, especially my own. Without you, we would not have been able to get through these past five years. Each of us has had tremendous support every year through the big projects we've completed, hard classes we've taken, and awards we've won. You have been able to see us grow from freshmen to super seniors, and we know that you'll always be there for us throughout the next several years at college and beyond. In closing, I want to tell you about one of my favorite scenes from the Harry Potter movies. During Order of the Phoenix, Voldemort had come back from the magic world and the students of Hogwarts learned how to defend themselves with magic through a club called Dumbledore's Army. To motivate the group, Harry Potter said, every great wizard started out as nothing more than we are now, students. If they can do it, why not us? And although we aren't witches and wizards graduating from Hogwarts, although I wish we were, we will still have the chance to make an impact on the muggle world just like every other leader in the past. How are we, the class of 2018, going to impact the world and become leaders in our society? Again, I want to thank you for listening to my message tonight and supporting the class of 2018 as we begin the next chapter of our lives into adulthood and beyond. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Family, friends, teachers, faculty, community members, and everyone in between. I'm sure I can speak for everyone when I say we are thankful for you being here and for being a part in any small way of this journey. Thank you. Tonight, we have reached a pinnacle point of our educational careers, and soon we will commence the next of many great journeys. As we all move in separate directions, headed for the inevitable future, I'd like to remember our beginning. Five years ago, on a sweltering hot day in July, we were all together for the very first time. The heat was made so much worse by the fact that we were all incomprehensibly nervous because high school is absolutely terrifying. I sat down to lunch that day with three people who had set the tone for my whole high school career. They were all kind to me that day and made me feel welcome, not like the outsider I thought I would be, and I have never forgotten that. That first interaction of kindness and acceptance exemplifies what the class of 2018 truly is, a family. We have been a family for these last five years, and every day you made school a home away from home. Since that first day, we have faced many challenges, some more daunting than any traditional student could imagine. We faced AR tests, novel studies, and service learning. We made it through junior internship and the dreaded senior project. We have faced heartbreaks, losses, failures, and everything in between. We have laughed together and we have cried together. And through every good and bad moment, we have had one another. Whether we like it or not, we have shared the most tumultuous times in our lives with one another. We all share a bond, and I am incredibly grateful to be tied to each of you by this experience. There is no doubt that we are quite a loud family when we get together. I can't remember a time when we weren't being ridiculously obnoxious. On senior project presentation night, when the last presentations were over and we were waiting on grades, the relief in the air was tangible. Everyone was giddy, cracking jokes, and shouting to their friends who were 10 feet away because we were just too excited to talk at normal volume. We were shouting our presentation times to one another, one another and offering our congratulations to everyone who was under that 10 minute mark. Nothing could bring us down. Nothing, not one thing, could 
could keep us quiet on that night. Or on our Fort Fisher trip during our sophomore year. We were so exhilarated during that time. At the seafood restaurant, the waiter hated us because we were all over the place having a good time. We played spoons in the hotel lobby, and anyone who has ever played spoons knows how loud it is and how lucky I am to still have all ten fingers. On our, we're on our class trip to Washington, D.C., way back during our freshman year. Everything about that trip was loud. The bus rides, the hotel, every meal. It was our first overnight trip of high school, and we were all really soaking it in. On the bus ride there, when we were stuck in traffic, we were packed together at the windows of the bus, urging, urging truck drivers to honk their horns. At the hotel, we had the staff call to tell us to be quiet after we stayed up late talking to one another in the hallway. We were chattering constantly, even though we had known each other for less than a year. We all connected like we'd known each other for a lifetime. Together, we are loud, we are outgoing, we are happy, we are ourselves. A few months ago, I came across two simple words that I will leave you with now. Exist loudly. As someone who naturally talks very loudly and is often told to quiet down, because of that, this quote became a new personal mantra, and in many ways, I feel that it applies to our class as a whole. Tonight, you walk across the stage for the last time and go out into the world. While you are there, exist loudly. Be heard. Make yourself known. Find your passions. Fight for what you believe in. Be wholly unashamed of who you are. Exist loudly, and I know that each of you will change the world. Congratulations to the class of 2018, my second family. So while I was enjoying Jalen, Emily, and Hannah's speech, I was also working on correcting our video issue. We're going to try again. Growth mindset, right?
Good evening. So, class of 2018, you've arrived. Finally, after five hard years of work, you've managed to get to this point. We are standing on the threshold of what is yet to come. Uh, I remember you guys when you were a silly, immature freshman just coming into the early college. And looking at you now, you're still silly. Not quite as immature as you, as you were. It seems like only yesterday that you guys came into our school and now look, you've all grown up to be great young men and women. The last five years has gone by very fast. So many memories, so many friends, so many math problems. It has been my pleasure to watch you guys grow and mature over the last five years. Um, and I'm super proud of the young men and women that you have become. But I am so excited and proud that some of my first kiddos that I got to teach are already on to bigger and better things. Above all, I'm really looking forward to the achievements and accomplishments and accolades that all of you are going to contribute to this world. And, and more importantly, I'm looking forward to taking credit for all of it. And I wish you nothing but happiness and success in this next stage of your life. I wish all of you luck in whatever it is that you're going to do when you leave here. But remember, don't be a stranger. You're always welcome back here to let us know how you're doing. You are all going tremendous directions and doing great things. I couldn't be more proud of the success that you've already demonstrated. And I know for sure that there's more success in your future. I wish for you much success and 492 dreams come true. Super seniors, graduates, congratulations on making it to graduation tonight. While it may feel like this is the end of a journey, that you're crossing a finish line, in reality, tonight is the beginning of what comes next. That's why we call it commencement. Commencement is the beginning of the next step in life. And while you travel along that path, just please know that those of us at the early college carry a piece of you in our hearts, and we hope that you also carry a piece of us in your hearts. Congratulations on commencement. Congratulations on everything that you've accomplished. Please know that we are so proud of you and so humbled to have had a small part in getting you to this point. Congratulations to you, the class of 2018 graduates of Edgecombe Early College. Congratulations, class of 2018. Congratulations on graduating. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. Good luck, guys. Congratulations. Congratulations to you all. I love you guys. Congratulations. Congratulations. You did it. Congratulations. I love you guys. Good luck.
We've come to the part of the evening that I'm sure you are all here for, but it's the part that I dread the most because I do not want them to leave. And Hannah, I almost made it without crying, so thanks. <laughs> we will now have the awarding of the diplomas. If the graduates would please stand. Camille Brianne Baker. <laughs> Emily Grayson Brake. Logan Ann Burnett. <laughs> Daniel Scott Cavanaugh. Brianna Nicole Cowan. Grant Isaac Davis. Jacob Keith Driver. <laughs> Jacob Dylan Hyman. Sarah Victoria Keeter. <laughs> Hannah Lee Lancaster. Jalen Demetrius Moore. <laughs> Trinis Brianna Moore. Colin Nelson Morris. <laughs> 
Sam Edward Mosley. Thomas Robert Mosley. Heather Elena Purnell. Roman Kyle Poling. Michaela Rain Elau Roberts. Madison Claire Scott. Victoria Grayson Smith. Stephanie Alexandria Salings. Madison Brooke Strickland. Austin Keith Suggs. <laughs> Sarah Elizabeth Tomlin. Hannah Grace Webb. <laughs> Samantha Dawn Wilson. Congratulations for the last time, Super Seniors. Thank you all, uh, Super Seniors, dignitaries who may, may be seated. Thank you.
So I probably have a lot in common with most of you in this room. I like to eat. And when I was growing up, I always enjoyed the holidays because I knew that my family would be cooking and I would be eating. And for a long time, many, many years, that's how my holidays went. My parents or grandparents, aunts and uncles, they cooked. And I and the other kids ate. And then we ate some more. And then we took a nap. But there came a time when I got older, when it was no longer possible for me to just show up and eat. There came a time when I was expected to put food on the table too. It wasn't enough for me just to consume, I had to produce. The adults in this room tonight know exactly what I'm talking about. And you probably see where I'm going with this. There comes a time in the lives of young people when they must take greater responsibility for their future. When they don't just show up and eat, but they also cook. For some scholars, this is the point when motivation to learn and grow becomes intrinsic. You're driven less by incentives and rewards and grades and more by a passion for learning, a connection between school and the real world, and a relentless desire to be ready for what comes next. For many of you, this turning point came a long time ago when you entered the early college. While for others of you, you arrived at this point while you were here. And for a few of you, you may still be getting there, and that's okay. However, there's a funny thing about cooking. Cooking isn't just about you, it's about others. In fact, that's really the whole point, isn't it? We nourish others, we provide them sustenance, we think about their needs and wants and wishes and how to feed and love and support them. In some ways, cooking is a metaphor for teaching. It's a metaphor for parenthood, and to be sure, it's a metaphor for citizenship. The truth is that we can no longer be all about us. That's not the reality of our world. We are all interconnected, interdependent, and interrelated. As Dr. Martin Luther King once said, we are all tied together in an inescapable network of mutuality. We no longer live in an age when we can look the other way while others suffer or struggle. We do not live in a time when we can wait for someone else to step up and accept responsibility. There can be no us and them. We breathe the same air, we share the same planet, and we owe the same debt to our past that we build a better future for our children. I would charge you, the class of 2018, to not only live out loud, as Hannah said, but also to live together. While you are taking the world by storm and doing great and amazing things, do those great and amazing things for each other. When you meet new people, Seek first to understand them before seeking to be understood by them. When you are online, bring civility instead of hostility to your conversations. When you are being a consumer, think about how what you buy impacts the world in which we all live. When you become a parent one day, turn off the TV, put away the cell phones, and read to your kids and then play with them and help them discover the world in which we all live. When you are talking politics with your neighbors, seek common ground instead of the moral high ground. When you see someone in need, someone hungry, someone angry, help them, <coughs> feed them, soothe them. When you see racism, sexism, ageism, or cruelty, or inequality of any kind, Speak up for what you know is right. When you look at the community in which you live, ask yourself how you can make it better, 
stronger, and more vibrant. The way you live your life matters, and it should matter to someone other than just you. Teachers and parents already know this. This is not about us. It's about our kids. It's about what comes next and those who will walk in our footsteps. It's about growing relationships, building community, and making your success and my success one and the same. It's about cooking, not about eating. And while I have this one final opportunity to speak with you, I want to emphasize that Edgecombe County, Tarboro, Pine Tops, Canada, the North Side, need people like you to keep our county vibrant and healthy. There is a lot of history here, tremendous opportunity on the horizon, and a community that needs people like the early college class of 2018 to reinvest in it and to make your home, moving forward, a great place for all of us to live. I am encouraged by people like Mrs. Dawes, Ms. White, Mr. Harrison, and Mrs. Long, who grew up here and have stayed to raise their families here. I'm encouraged by Mr. Williams, who came through our public school system, graduated from the early college, and is now back giving to our community as our community liaison. I'm encouraged by Mrs. Ethelene Wilkins, who has lived here her whole life, and who serves her church, and our community, and our family in so many ways. I'm encouraged by Mr. Webb, who has raised four kids in our community, and by Mrs. Hayes, who is moving to Edgecombe County this summer with her family. By those teachers who drive in from outside the county because they feel a connection to Edgecombe. By the Board of Education, by the district leaders, and by the parents here tonight who give and give and give some more to make Edgecombe County a great place for us all to learn and live. Class of 2018, tonight is commencement. It's the beginning of what comes next. As you take the world by storm, as you become the next generation of those who cook, think about putting down long-term roots here in our county. I want to thank you, I congratulate you, and please know, moving forward, that a little piece of you stays with us. Good night. In just a moment, you will turn your tassel from the right to the left side of your motorboard to signify your graduation. In doing so, you will become alumni of Edgecombe Early College High School. If you ever forget which side your tassel goes on, remember that you wear it on the left side over your heart to remind you of your alma mater. Would the members of the class of 2018 please rise? You may now turn your tassels. <laughs> by the power vested in me, by our superintendent, our Edgecombe County Board of Education, and the state of North Carolina, I am so pleased to pronounce you as graduates of Edgecombe Early College High School. I present you all again the class of 2018. Please remain standing as we recess. Parents, after the recessional, you may join your graduates in the atrium. Dr. Bridges, would you please lead our guests off stage?